Here's a question someone posted on Reddit, and they're asking about how to set the limits of a double integral for a joint density function. So they say, suppose they have this probability function with density k times x times y. x has to be greater than or equal to 0, y has to be greater than or equal to 0, and x plus y has to be less than or equal to 1, and the probability is 0 otherwise. And they need to figure out how to set the limits of this integral to solve for what the constant k needs to be set to to make the total probability under the curve equal to 1. So let me try to sh show you a way to think about this. Uh, I'm a very visual person, so let's look at a graph of what we're talking about here. So here's a plot of the function y, or sorry, z equals x times y. And here on the x-axis, we're going from 0 to 1 and a half, but really it needs to stop at 1. And here on y, same thing, just to give us an idea of what this function looks like that we're dealing with. But there's this constraint, and the constraint is that x plus y has to equal 1, or we can solve that. If we turn that up like this, we can think about that constraint as being the linear equation y equals 1, minus x. So it has a slope of minus 1 here. So that kind of builds a wall. And what we're trying to do with this integral is get all the area under this curve. Let's look at the underside of the curve. Well, we can't really see it because of the wall there. But we're trying to get the area under this curve up to the wall, but nothing past the wall. So here's a way to, to think about what we're doing here. And you can do this. You can write the limits of a double integral either way you want. So normally I like to think about doing the integral for the x variable first and then the y. It doesn't really matter. Um, so think, think about this is what you're doing. As you integrate out the x variable, what you're creating is a marginal distribution that removes the x from the game. And so what you would want to do is we're going to integrate the area under this curve, it's going to be as a function, we're going to integrate the area from x equals 0 up to what? Well, well, the limit is, as far as we're allowed to go in the x direction, is up to this line, this boundary here. So if we're integrating up to this line and, you're, and we're doing it with respect to x, then we would represent this line as, well, x equals 0 up to 1 minus y. Because if y equals 1, then we're only integrating a x up to 0, right? We can't even get started. If y equals 0 0.5, then we want to integrate x up to 0 0.5. So we're integrating up to 1 minus y. So let's see what kind of function we get when we just do that one part here. So let me type this into maple. So in maple we'd say we want to integrate the function x times y dx basically for x equals 0 to 1 minus y. And let's see what that gives us. So this gives us again the marginal distribution which tells us the probability just in terms of y. And so what we're doing is we're collapsing. When we integrate over x, we're taking all this area along the x-axis and we're stacking it against the y-axis. We're just squishing this down against the y-axis over here. And so what we're left with is a one-dimensional graph that's going to be stacked. Let's look and see what that looks like. Let's plot that real quickly. So let's plot previous function for y equals 0 to 1.1, eh, just to get an idea of what that looks like. Okay, so here's a graph of what this marginal distribution looks like. And what we're doing in the second part of the double integral is we are integrating over y from 0 to 1, because the x is no longer involved. So. We're doing each part of the double inter integral separately, but that's, that's fine. So here, if we integrate that, here, let's do this again. And instead of 
plotting it. Let's integrate previous expression from y equals 0 to 1, and we get 1 over 24. So that tells us that the total area under this three-dimensional curve up to this blue wall is 1 24th. So enable, in order to make this a probability function that has total area 1, we're going to have to multiply that x times y function by 24. I hope this visualization has helped you understand what's going on. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment or question in the comment section below. Otherwise, good luck.